Hey, I'm back with Jared Beck, uh, one of the plaintiffs for uh, the plaintiff attorneys for the DNC lawsuit. Um, we've been talking about more of the specific legalities. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, you know, the, the DNC lawyer in court talked about the fiduciary duty or contractual obligation. So basically saying um, the neutrality is more of a disc discretionary rule that they're not totally, uh, you know, mandated to follow. Well, again, I'm not a lawyer, but for the layman, if these are discretionary rules, then why are they, why is there a charter? Why are there bylaws? What is the, are they not enforceable? Uh, are they not enforceable for the next election? Uh, whether it's a, whether the victim is a Bernie or the victim is somebody else, uh, what is the point of, as a private organization, having a charter or bylaws, whether it's in the political arena or elsewhere, uh, if right. it's just discretionary? That's a, that's a good question. And um, maybe I'll ask a, another question in response to your question. Uh, if the DNC doesn't have a duty to its members, which is what I think you'll see Bruce Spiva argue for the DNC at several points uh, during the uh, transcript, um, if the DNC doesn't have a duty to its members, who does it have a duty to? Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. And also, if, the, if these are just discretionary rules and they're not enforceable, then what, what are the, what are the um, structures in place for the next election, whether it's federal, right. state, what have you, where you could expect no funny business going on? Right. Uh, again, well, let, 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 me, let me ask you. Let me ask you another question, and then Elizabeth wants to say something. Uh, what if uh, What if Apple uh, got on the uh, went into a court of law and said, uh, "We actually don't believe we have any enforceable obligations uh, to our shareholders." Right. What do you think would happen to the Apple uh, stock price if they said we don't have enforceable to the shareholders? Oh, yeah. What if they said we 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 have all this money in the bank? You know, we, 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 you know, we sell all these products, um, but you know what? We've decided today that we have no legal obligation to shareholders. So, um, you know, if we want to now just stuff our pockets with, with, with all of the assets of Apple and disappear, uh, we were perfectly free to do that. You think that uh, Apple shareholders would uh, feel confident about their, uh, their stock in Apple? Of course not. Plummet. Yeah. Well, that, <laughs> that's what the DNC just said. Mm -hmm. Right. To hey. its members. I agree. Uh, to actually, to the public. Right. Uh, that's what it said about it, it, uh, people who are in the Democratic Party. I think it's pretty shocking. Right. And I also want to ask you, this I don't think is in your lawsuit, um, but I, it just came to my mind. The judge, in a, in a few of the questions he was asking, was focusing and asking the DNC about what is its role in state primaries and right. in charge of state primaries, this and that. Um, it seems to me that in addition to the Bernie uh, Sanders supporters, uh, and people who donated to the DNC being defrauded, uh, there was something called the Hillary Victory Fund, which right. uh, TYT and others have reported on that essentially, you know, allowed donors to give more money, breaking it up between donations directly to Hillary's campaign, uh, the states, you know, all that. But really, it was supposed to go down to the states, but reporting has shown it pretty much went to the Hillary c campaign and, right. to, and to the DNC. Um, isn't that kind of fraudulent in addition yeah. to your lawsuit? Yeah, and, and, and it's interesting. You, you know, uh, I didn't know anything about the Hillary Victory Fund until Nico House brought it to his attention when he came into our office uh, last year in March uh, with evidence that the uh, Bernie Sanders campaign had been infiltrated. But, uh, you know, I think you raise a very, very important point here, Jordan, which is that we're talking about public funds and uh, you know, when you talk about uh, fraud uh, uh, being perpetrated by the DNC and how it uh, conducted these primaries, uh, when you then uh, take into account the fact that public monies were expended in large amounts to run those primaries uh, based on the, the premise that they were fair and de uh, uh, even-handed democratic elections, well, now you're talking about you know, what in my view might be a, a misappropriation of public funds, which, you know, I think that issue is somewhat beyond the scope of the lawsuit, although not totally unrelated. But, you know, I would imagine that there are criminal statutes 
potentially applicable there. But again, I'm not a criminal lawyer. You know, I'm focused on the civil case. But you know, that's something that uh, people might want to consider. Mm-hmm. And uh, lastly, uh, what you bring up sorry. is something that we can uh, definitely delve into in the discovery process. That's right. a good point. Which right. is the next? Yeah, and that's the next stage if we get past the motion to dismiss, which is currently pending before before the court. But Elizabeth makes a very, very good point. That was my next segue. So where are we at? Obviously, that was the opening arguments uh, between you, the DNC. For, for the audience, I reached out to the DNC a week ago. Still haven't heard back on whether they defend what their lawyer said. I'm not surprised. Uh, so if you want to call the DNC, uh, look up their number. Uh, they, I, I asked them specifically what they thought about the lawyer essentially saying going forward they could do whatever they want in terms of bypassing the voters. Uh, they didn't respond. Uh, now, the judge, has he given a target date or how long the process should be for him to read through uh, both arguments and any of that? No, he was, in fact, he was very uh, uh, straightforward uh, at the end of the hearing with um, uh just letting people know that it was going to take some time uh, to prepare the order, uh, given the um, the complexity and number of issues involved, and given what's at stake in the case. So, we don't have a time frame, but um, you know, I imagine that uh, he and his clerks are very, very busy um, uh, uh, preparing that uh, written order as we speak. And uh, obviously, there's a lot of interest about this online uh, among progressives. How could people learn more about the case? Is there anything you'd encourage them to do? Yeah, I mean, I would. I would first of all, um, you know, encourage. I would encourage people to follow the lawsuit and not, um, not, not uh, believe what is reported secondhand as the gospel, but go to the source documents yourself and verify everything. Uh, I noticed that the Boston Herald published an article. I mean, I om- I think it's clearly an op-ed where they basically said, despite all the awful things the DNC's attorney has stated in open court, uh, the, the lawsuit is not going to go anywhere. Right. And it was clear to me upon reading the comments that people had done their own research and they disagreed with the journalist, who I believe was the legal correspondent for the Boston Herald. So I think that's very encouraging. And I encourage people, regardless of your party affiliation, to do your own research. Yeah, And, and, that, it, that's and, a good and it wouldn't shock me if that Boston Globe uh, writer didn't actually read the lawsuit. But go ahead. Right. Right. No, and and we're, you know, I, I, I think Elizabeth brings up an excellent point, because I think if and when... Um, the mainstream media reports on this and you know, again, I mean, they can ignore what I have to say. I'm just a lawyer representing my clients. But um, at some point, we're going to get an order from a judge, okay, an Article Three federal judge. And um, I, you know, at some point, you just, you can't, you know, you can't, you can't ignore something and you can't call it fake news. Uh, court, court records are not fake news. Orders of courts are not fake news. So I'm confident we're going to get in, uh, get coverage in the mainstream media. Um, but just getting back to Elizabeth's point, uh, I think a lot of the narratives that we're going to see, and she referenced an article in the Boston Herald. Um, you know, I think, you know, I, I saw something in the Washington Times, you know, th- they're going to try to spin a narrative that uh, minimizes uh, what's going on in this courtroom. And I think they're going to make arguments or- Kind of like what Michael Shore did. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I think, you know, in a way, you know, your network sort of gave us a preview of what we're gonna see. And in some, you know, and and, and that's a helpful thing in some ways because we can, it gets the discussion going earlier. Uh, And I think as we're having this discussion, that's one of the benefits that we have to this case. You know, we're trying to seek justice for people, but we're also allowing a discussion to occur as part of the public discourse. And if we're going to fix our democracy, that's how we have to do it. And by the way, in in fairness, I I think whether it's TYT or otherwise, I think people need to be careful about blanketing if two hosts have a conversation that TYT, uh, you know, the entirety of TYT, has an, you know, 
is looking at something this way or this way. Obviously, that segment was on right. TYT, but I have no idea what half of my colleagues think about it. Uh, the, you know, it, it no, was only I, those that, two. So I, I, that's a fair point. But you know, understand, Jordan, that there are very, very strong uh, feelings uh, coming from the people that we're representing in this case. Because oh, yeah. and and this is this is not something that surprises me, having represented many, many victims of fraud over the years. Uh, you know, justice is one of those things that we crave as human beings when wrongs are done to us. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have a legal system. And there has not even been a semblance of the possibility of getting justice for all those that were defrauded um, until, uh, until this lawsuit. And so there's a lot of strong feelings behind it. So it doesn't surprise me uh, that, um, you know, the climate is hot and that tempers are flaring. Oh, yeah. uh, but I think at the end of the day, um, if, it, if, 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 if that uh, emotional, um, uh, if that emotional energy can be channeled into a really positive uh, discourse uh, around this lawsuit, then I think that ultimately will be a good thing for our democracy. I agree. Jared, thank you. Uh, now that I'm off the road, I, I could cover this a lot more. It's been a juggling act the last few months for me. But uh, yeah. thanks for what you're doing, and uh, we'll stay in touch, uh, and I'll keep covering this. Okay, great. And, and thank, thank you. you for... Thank you, Elizabeth, too. It's good to be with you, Jordan. Okay. Take thanks. care.